Tech students. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to be here and uh, talk about uh, innovation and really what we call frugal innovation or Gaussian innovation, which I'm going to be talking about. Now, before I talk about that, I will ask a question. What has India done well since independence? When I ask this question, we've now completed 68 years of our independence. And, and every time I ask this question and people say, India has done well in, in IT. Yes, that is true. Then they say, India has done well in mobiles. I ask them further and they stop there. Then they say, well, India has done well in, someone will say, cricket. <coughs> then again I ask them, then someone say, India has done well in Bollywood. But what they don't talk about what India has done well in is, India has done well in agriculture. We, I am talking, I am belonging to the generation. In the 60s, India had to get grains from the world. The PL 480 program was there. There was uh, the first green revolution started. And as we speak today, the second green revolution is on. India is exporting grains to the world. So that is a major achievement that India has done, number one. Number two, India has done well in pharmacy. It has become the pharmacy of the world. We are exporting drugs to many parts of the world, including USA, UK, and, and, and also the Western world in a big way. So pharmacy is another area where we've done phenomenally well. The third area which people don't talk about what we've done well in is medicine. And I, I'm, I'm very proud to say that what our generation has contributed to medicine is that no one has to go out of this country for any treatment now. <coughs> That has definitely been established. Having said that, I come from, from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, where we treat about 3.5 million patients every year at the, co at the cost of $1 per day. And this featured All India Institute at the cover story of the Newsweek at the medical meccas of the world. But in medicine, we have failed because we are not able to deliver affordable health care in a large to everyone. We are not able to provide emergency medicine in a proper way. So that is the next frontier that needs to be developed. Emergency medicine being available to all and health care being available to all at an affordable cost. Because of health-related expenditure, 39 million people fall below the poverty line every year. They have to send, spend money on some health-related expenditure, whether it is medicine or whether it is an implant or a device or a treatment, and 70 to 75 percent is out-of-pocket expenditure. That is a huge problem of the country, and we need to address that clearly. So 80 percent of the devices in India are imported, and they are only for 20 percent of the population. Can we not think of a new revolution wherein we can have generic devices hot in India, made in India, and being exported to the rest of the world? And I think that is the next revolution that needs to happen, and we are trying to talk about low-cost medical devices. So in India, we have, we wait for problems till they reach a critical mass before we solve them. But we have patients, but when we solve these problems, we solve them in a cheaper, faster, and more effective way. And those, those ways are, examples are our Indian struggle for independence. Absolutely frugal. No bloodshed, no cost, absolutely frugal. So as Indians, I feel that we are genetically blessed, we are genetically endowed to innovate and we should leverage that to do for the healthcare of mankind and not only for India but for the rest of the world. Now in this I want to show that the world is now moving from what we call imported innovation that was in the 1980s where ideas were from the West, manufacturing was done in the West and the devices etc were deployed in countries uh, which were developing. 1990 onwards saw export-led innovation where ideas were from the West, manufacturing was done in the East, and they were deployed again back in the West. 
2000 onwards, we saw end-to-end -end innovation and examples of innovation done in the developing countries, including India, China, wherein ideas were from there, manufacturing was done there, and they were deployed there. But 2010 onwards, we are finding what we call globally networked innovation, where ideas are equally there from the East and from the West. Manufacturing can be done together because there are strengths here and strengths there, and then they could be deployed in both parts of the world. And I think from 2015 to 2020 onwards, we will see more and more bulbs on from the from the developing country. So, just uh, explaining about what is Gandhian innovation and and uh, how it the philosophy of our Gandhian innovation is with a deep sense of uh, service to the underserved. So, the philosophy is really to serve the the people at large. The shareholder wealth and profits are important, but they are not the primary primary importance is to make a difference in this world and, and that is and be able to work within constraints because constraints are always going to be there uh, in, in many parts of, of, of this country and we have to work within constraints so that is the the strength of the Gandhian innovation where you're supposed to work with limited resources and yet deliver now if you look at the frugal innovations that have happened in India in the last 10 or 15 years Six out of ten of those innovations are in, in the healthcare space. I mean, you look at uh, 1298 uh, ambulance services in Bombay. We look at the uh, Swatch water filter, where they've used rice husk to filter water and is being marketed by Tata. The, you look at the Narayan Hirdale, the assembly line of cardiac surgery. The Arvind Eye Hospital making the lens implants for three or four dollars, which are being exported to the rest of the world. The Jaipur prosthetic and the Jaipur prosthetic limbs. Uh, the GE has come. Now all these multinationals have set up their innovation centers in India, whether it be Bangalore, <coughs> Pune, Bombay, uh, or Gurgaon, uh, uh, or, or even in Noida, to really to leverage the Indian mindset and and the Indian innovation uh, streak that is uh, definitely there. Next, please. See, so, yes, some more examples of frugal uh, innovations. Next, please. Now, I just wanted to put this to give you an example of how our pharma industry has done so well. Now, the antiretroviral therapy, triple therapy, triple drug therapy for HIV AIDS was costing more than $10,000 treatment for one year at the time of the multinational had originated it. But within six months, Cipla came up with a combination of those triple drugs and the cost went from $10,000 to $350 for a one-year treatment. And over the time, it has come down to $100 or $130 treatment for HIV AIDS for one-year treatment, antiretroviral triple therapy. We have missed the AIDS epidemic. Look at the wonder how it has been done by, uh, by the Indian pharma industry. We may not have invented any new drug, uh, drug discovery may not have happened, but that will happen once the infrastructure is set up. But we have been able to make generics which are at par with anywhere else in the world, and we have been able to satisfy not only the Indian demand for medications at a low cost, but many parts of the world as such. Next, please. Now, this is another example of need-based innovation where, where we have Indian innovators and how they think. This is just outside my my, the place where I stay, and there is a small island of land at a crossroad, and people come there to give grain to the birds because it is it is um, nice to to be able to feed the birds. So they come and buy. This gentleman saw thought that this is an opportunity, so he started selling those grains there, so people don't have to carry. Anyone can stop there, buy, and then give it to the birds. At the end of the day, at the end of the day. He cleans that place up, so the place remains clean, and he recycles some of the grains that are left. So that is frugal innovation. That is the innovation which we, we need to do. We don't need to unnecessarily waste it. Looking, come back to this slide, please. Looking back, see, he has an umbrella there, but he has a piece of jute hanging, which he wets at 45 degrees centigrade in Delhi. That cools him better than that umbrella. So these are innovations. These are what we have to leverage and get ideas from these kind of things. Next, please. So the pieces of the puzzle as far as India is concerned, whether it be the, the, the opportunity, whether it be the, the manpower, whether it be the capital, 
whether it be the government support, whether it be the industry support, that is all at the moment falling in place and the opportunity is immense at this moment for innovating in India and India is poised to innovate. Next please. So we have started a, a school of international biodesign at uh, the All India Institute of Medical Sciences uh, in collaboration with the uh, Indian Institute of Technology and the Biotechnology Consortium of India Limited, funded by the Department of Biotechnology. And our philosophy is to train young innovators to innovate at low cost. And we've had some successes. We've been able to develop about 30 different medical devices, nine startups, and, and several patents. And two of, a few of the products have got US FDA approval and are in the market. The philosophy of our program is Gandhi. And the acronym spells for Global, Affordable, Need Driven Healthcare Innovation. Gandhi. So that is what our philosophy is more for less for more. Some examples, if I have some time, probably I'll talk about two or three examples of some of the products that we have invented at our center. This is a, a, a fecal incontinence device wherein it is a, there is <coughs> nothing available in the world for collecting stool. Catheters are there for collecting urine, but nothing is there for stool. For elderly patients, for patients in ICUs, for patients who are immobile, uh, there are just diapers that are available. We have developed a simple methanol based self-expanding catheter that can collect stool in a bag. And this has got USFD approved and is now available in the Indian market. And, 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 and it is a, a new concept. Uh, we are think not talking of reinventing what is there in the West, but creating new patterns, creating new ideas, which are simple and ultimately applicable to the rest of the world. This is another problem. 15 million road traffic hacks, accidents happen in India, out of which 5 million are fractures of the lower limb. And, and, and this, we have for immobilizing those fractures, we have the metal splints, which are not available at the site of accidents. <coughs> we have some Western pneumatic splints, which are horribly expensive and not available in India, available very limitedly. And we have the splint, which is the metal one, which is placed at the site of accident by an ambulance which comes, then the ambulance delivers the patient to the hospital, wants that metal splint back, and then we uh, the, the patient goes for an x-ray. Again, there is a lot of movement. Goes for a CT scan or an MRI. Again, there is a lot of movement. Then goes to the operation theater. We developed a simple cardboard splint, costing anywhere between 200 to 300 rupees. This is coated with a special plastic, has Velcro tapes, it's like a cricket pad, can be inverted to use for the left limb or the right limb, can be stacked in the boot of the car or in an ambulance or in a PCR van, and can be placed at the site of accident. You can do an x-ray uh, and a CT along with it and remove it only in the operation theater and then throw it out. It's a simple innovation, and this has been quoted uh, a lot in the, it's now being marketed by Hindustan Latex Limited, in nine states in the country and is available for road traffic accidents and we are in, uh, we are in uh, discussion with the army etc to take this. This is another simple device for giving fluid in patients who are in shock. Normally if you are not able to find a vein within 45 seconds to one minute then you can, the recommendations are that you can go and insert a needle into the bone of the leg in these patients who are in shock and give fluid the up, upper end of the leg, you <coughs> the bone, you can inject the needle. The solutions that are available in, in the world right now are battery operated, rechargeable. We have developed a simple mechanical, like the carpenter uses his drill with a, with a thread to rotate it, simple mechanical solution, and you can give fluid into the bone uh, without it. Next please. Can you click on this? Yeah. This is a simple video which is demonstrating how this needle can be. Can you hold? Injection, no extra repression, no soft tissue threading. It takes basically 8 to 10 seconds to insert the needle and you are able to give fluid into and medicines into the bone to define. Then we have also developed a simple biopsy needle wherein it collects the sample in that green chamber which is there and automatically seals the point where the biopsy has been done. This is in the phases of evaluation, not yet available in the market. Next please. 
this is another device for uh, 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 resuscitating newborn infants. Typically, the AMBU bag has to be held by an ASHA worker by one hand and pumping with the other hand. We have just devised it as a foot pedal, and so that one hand is free of the ASHA worker to do other things. Simple, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Next, please. This is a cardiopulmonary resuscitation device, wherein so when the patient is uh, in cardiac arrest, then you have to do a cardiac massage. And this car effectivity of the cardiac massage falls after one minute because the operator gets tired and you change the person and the effectivity drops 30 to 40 to 50 percent within the first one minute. And the recommendations are now that you have to do cardiac massage for at least 30 to 45 minutes now before declaring the patient as expired because many times we are able to revive, revive them. So we have developed a simple device which is electromechanical. It causes sternal compression, circumferential compression, and circumferential decompression. Next please. And this device is a, a mechanical device, is in the phases of uh, the prototype is ready. Next please. This is, again, this is one of the most complex devices we have made, but uh, now it is uh, ready, the, the, the CPR machine. And this is a, an assistive device for inserting the tube in the nose for feeding. Now many times when you insert the tube, it can go into the wrong tract. It can go into the respiratory tract. And if you give fluid in the respiratory tract, then there is going to be problems. Patient can go into pneumonia and ultimately death. So we have to ensure that it, uh, it goes into the, the, the food pipe. Next please. This simple device ensures that it goes, the red tube goes into the food pipe only. Simple device, not expensive, and it is marketed along with the, uh, with the tube that is inserted. You just keep this uh, kind of spatula which ensures that the, the tube is going posterior. Next please. So uh, in India, the show starts for medical device innovation, which is going to become a uh, healthcare industry, is going to become a $200 billion industry by 2025. The show starts in 2025, but the tickets are being sold now. That's what they say. But as a nation to succeed, we need to start preparing now and no time better than now. Next please. I, I will stop here. Thank you so much.